Aloha, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to another week of Trauma Recovery University. I'm your host, Athena Moberg, and with us in the green room, of course, is your incredible co-host, Bobby Parrish. And are you in the right place? Who are we? Where are you at? If you are a survivor, well, I'm Athena Moberg, and this is Bobby Parrish, and you, hopefully, are an adult survivor of uh, childhood abuse, specifically childhood sexual abuse, and you're looking for resources. And if that's you, we are sorry that you have lived through your abuse, but we want to let you know that we are here every single week. We show up here every single week, and we do live Q&A for the survivor community of child abuse, specifically childhood sexual abuse. And we come every single week with a new topic, and this week's topic is the unique needs of the male survivor. This is sort of a tribute to the male survivor community. We have resources specifically for men. Uh, this includes any man, no matter how old you are. If you were sexually abused and you are a man, you identify with male, him, his, then this is for you. This broadcast is for you. So we are so grateful that you're here. Again, my name is Athena Moberg, and your co-host is Bobby Parrish. We show up here every week, live Q&A. Welcome to you. If you want to tweet us your questions, we do a live Q&A every single week. You can tweet us using the hashtag no more shame, or you can head on over to our website, nomoreshameproject.com or traumarecoveryuniversity.com. We hope that you'll find our websites very, very helpful for you with lots of resources. We have over 100 hours of video. We have over 100 pages of downloadable resources for you, for you to print out, make a, make a notebook, um, whatever it is that you would like to do with our resources. They're just complimentary as a thank you for being a listener, viewer, or just an awesome survivor, we would love it if you would subscribe to this channel if this is helpful for you. So there's a subscribe button somewhere right over here on one of these sides. I don't know which side it's on, probably like right here. And we would love for you to subscribe to our channel. We value you and we're so grateful that you chose to spend this hour of your week with us. So again, a tribute to our male survivor community. And before we get started, I really just want to say a very special thank you to Maggie and to Matt for their extensive research on the topic of the male survivor. And we will be linking up in our downloadable resource a whole bunch of resources for men. And we're just so grateful that you've chosen to spend some time with us. So if you are listening on a podcast such as iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, or any other podcast platform, we are grateful that you're here with us. We also want to let you know that this is a video broadcast. So you can head on over to our Roku TV channel, which can be found on any Roku device or Roku television, by simply searching the channel guide for Trauma Recovery University. And if you are on YouTube, and you're, that's where you're finding us, you can find all of our entire library of videos by simply doing a search for Trauma Recovery University, or you can go to youtube.com forward slash Trauma Recovery University TV. And again, we also have the two websites, nomoreshameproject.com and traumarecoveryuniversity.com. So thank you, thank you for being here. We love coming here and hanging out with you every single week for live Q&A. And please tweet us your questions using the hashtag no more shame on the topic of the unique needs of the male survivor. Anything male related regarding childhood sexual abuse, we would love to answer your questions. And I'm going to hand this over to your co-host, Bobby Parrish. And I'll go ahead and take the Twitter stream over for you, Bobby. We are going to be answering everybody's questions. Take it away, Bobby. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad I'm that so you're, glad here, that you're tonight. here tonight. We are, we talking, are talking about, about the about unique needs, needs of male survivors. survivors. I'm going to back away from my computer a bit here as it's echoing like crazy. There I we don't go. know why it keeps like popping like 
anyway, weird. Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah. Tech issues. We had tech issues before we even started. We're sorry. <laughs> I know they moved the Google Hangouts over to YouTube, but they haven't been any different from us for us at all. So um, here we still sit, but here we still show up as well. So I'm going to issue a big old trigger warning for tonight's broadcast. This is a broadcast that discusses childhood abuse, specifically childhood sexual abuse. If you are a male survivor, tonight's broadcast might be especially triggering for you. So we encourage you to practice excellent self-care while you're listening um, or watching the video or the podcast, however you're consuming the content. If you get triggered, feel free to go ahead and shut it down and come back to us later. If you're watching us live, it'll be up on our YouTube channel fairly quickly. And if you're listening on a podcast or on a video, then it will be here when you're ready. Uh, we try really hard to put together topics that are relevant to all survivors, but not all of them are. So if you watch this, if you start watch this and you go, you know what, this is not helpful to me, then just shut it down um, and never come back to it if you don't want to. Um, it's just, it's all here for you. The information is for you to benefit you. It is not meant to trigger and harm you. So take what you need and leave the rest. If you're in crisis or you need care urgently tonight, we encourage you, if you're in the U.S., to reach out to our friends at RAIN. That's the Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network, R-A-I-N-N. -N. They have a toll-free 24-hour hotline at one 800 656 hope h-o-p-e they also have a 24-hour crisis chat feature on their website rain.org that's r-a-i-n-n dot o-r-g if you are in the uk you can reach out to the samaritans the samaritans are an incredible agency in the uk that provides crisis intervention for people with all sorts of mental health issues questions concerns needs for resources you can reach them at 116123. You can also text them at, <laughs> my eyes, too old, 0775909090. You can also email the Samaritans at joe, J-O, at samaritans.org. If you are in Australia, you can reach out to your national crisis hotline, and their number is 1311. One four. And we just truly encourage you to reach out for help if you need it right now while you're listening, if you know you're in crisis, because you deserve to get help. You deserve to get resources and encouragement and support to move forward. Um, it, is, it is a lie, an absolute lie, that you don't deserve any better, that you're not worth it, that you're not worthy of being loved. So we encourage you to reach out and to watch some more of these videos if right now you're in a place of crisis and you need to know that you're not alone uh, because you're not. There are, if you watch some of these videos, you'll see there are hundreds of us, hundreds of people who tweet us, who ask us questions, who let us know that they're out there. And we wanna let you know that we're out here um, all of the members of our family are on the Twitter stream right now tweeting in. They're all out there. Um, there is no one that shows up on our Twitter stream and asks for um, a place in the family who's ever turned away. So um, please don't hesitate to join us. If you're new to our videos at the very end, we'll talk about getting plugged into our Facebook support groups and how to become a part of our Twitter chats. Uh, we do three every week, so we would love to have you participate. Tonight, we're talking about the unique needs of male survivors. And I'm going to add right up front um, a caveat, I guess is, it's a good way to say it. We are not saying, nor will you ever hear us say, that men have more needs than women, or women have more needs than men in their recovery, or that women deserve more resources than men, or men deserve more resources than women. Um, that's not the case at all, and that's not what we're here to talk about tonight. 
we're here to talk about what might be some unique needs for male survivors that female survivors may not have. More often than not, what you will see out in the world is information that is geared towards the female survivor. Because frankly, the majority of survivors of childhood sexual abuse are female. But just the majority, that means 51%. There is a huge body of male survivors out there within our community and without our community who need help and support and encouragement. And so we wanna take this half an hour to an hour and provide information and resources for them. And we want to especially give you some information about some great organizations that are on the internet that are geared towards male survivors. Now that doesn't mean if you're a female survivor, you're not gonna hear something tonight and go, oh, wow, that really applies to me. And that doesn't mean that as a male survivor, you're not listening to any of our other videos going, oh, well, if only our female, that would apply to me. Hopefully not, heaven forbid, I hope not. Um, that we're not about generalizations and stereotypes. In fact, we try really hard not to be generalizing and stereotyping at all because generalizing and stereotyping is something that is typically done to survivors as a whole. And um, we don't like it and we don't wanna to add to it. So tonight is not about whose needs are more important. It's not about um, whitewashing any gender with a set of needs. It's about here's some things that we've noticed. Here are some things that the research has told us. And even more important, here are things that the men in our community have told us. We have some very faithful, very um, active members of our Twitter and Facebook family who are male survivors. And they have been very upfront with us about things that they see that are unique to the male experience. So they have shared those with us. And we're very, we feel really lucky to have their input. And so um, tonight we're going to hear a lot of information that was put together for us uh, by not just our research intern, Maggie, but by Matt at Surviving My Past. And then I also want to give uh, a big acknowledgement to Jack, um, who has been a part of our family for years. And he also is always a wealth of information about male survivor issues. So thank you to the three of you who have done such a good job of keeping um, male survivor issues focused um, and in front of us. And tonight we're just gonna take some time to unpack all of this. And if you're listening, you're live, you wanna give us some input, jump over to Twitter, use the hashtag no more shame and send us your questions and your input. Um, we would love to hear them. So Athena, what are we hearing so far from the Twitter stream? And how's everybody doing? Uh, everybody's, everybody seems to be sort of poised and ready for this topic and everybody's very excited about this topic. And Matt said something very key. It, the way that he worded this was, was so perfect. He said, tonight's chat on the unique needs of male survivors is for both guys and gals. The more we understand, the more we can help each other. And I just yeah. want that to come across as Bobby already mentioned. I want that to be the, the undercurrent under the undercurrent and the overarching theme of tonight's video. It really, it is really important to Bobby and I both. We are mothers of boys. Yes. We are, we are mothers. We are mothers of young men and they are not exempt from being sexually abused. We don't know what's going to happen in their lives. None of us know. You are watching this and you are either a man or you know a man. And there's a chance that you're watching this and you know 
either that you are a man or that you know a handful of men. And the statistics don't lie. If you're in a Starbucks line and there are six dudes within eyeshot, between four and six, one of them has been sexually abused. And one of them may be living silently in shame, just wishing that they had a safe place to share what's happened to them. Because the man code does not exist. It's a freaking fallacy. It's a myth. And we, we have a, a great set of resources on our one page dedicated to the male survivor community. I want to give a shout out to Men's Movement. Um, really a great website, great resource for men. Um, the uh, curator of Men's Movement contacted me today to thank Bobby and I personally for shedding light on this topic. And um, I'm not going to take credit for this. This is, this is something that our entire community needs and has been asking for and has hinted at and has contributed to. So you guys are the reason that any of this is even happening and you guys have all always been sharing your thoughts, your words, and, what, and what's going on. So well said, Matt. Um, and I just really want to make sure that uh, the male survivor community, we have, a, we have a group, you guys. We have, Bobby and I have, um, several safe groups where we have hundreds of people all healing in safety with one another. One of those groups is co, two of those groups are co-ed where men and women heal together. And I got to say that it is such a joy to see those two groups growing and growing with more men and even more women that feel safe and open to healing around other men as well. We are all in this together. So um, that's, that was, that's the overarching theme in the, in the Twitter feed, Bobby. Um, there was one other tweet. Um, Grace Hope says, I keep reading that if you're, that you, that you, meaning men, if you are abused, or maybe she doesn't mean men, maybe she means men and women. If you are abused, you will probably do the same abuse to others. I hate that they say that. And who are they anyway, right, Grace? Like, I'm right there with you. I hate that they say that. Who, who are they? I was told the same thing. See, I never knew um, growing up. Like, when you grow up in abuse, you don't even know you're being abused. Like, you just don't. And when I was old enough to know that abuse was abuse and that I was, in fact, abused, I reasoned, well, gosh, that's horrible. And then I asked some questions around my loved ones that were in my family of origin that were being abusive. And certainly, sure enough, they were abusers. So I was terrified. Not only was I told from a very young age that I would probably have six kids just like myself, shitty and lazy. And, you know, they're going to turn out just like you, you know, and that was what I was sort of told. And then on top of that, I figured out that, that what I was enduring was abuse. And I was terrified going, oh, my gosh, not only did I live through this, but I'm doomed to become that because that's what it says. Like, abused people become abusers. And I was just terrified, you guys. I was terrified of having children. And I'm sure that because I have received confidential emails, tweets, DMs, and other correspondence, I know that that's the, the feeling among the survivor community. We were, we all, many of us were afraid to have children because of the abuse that we incurred, and we didn't want to perpetuate that cycle. So, um, Bobby, how's everybody doing on the Twitter stream? Those were the two that really stood out to me, and, and Dawn was really, um, just really like high-fiving like yeah Matt like that's very well said and I I would agree yeah you know that <clears throat> that myth that people who are abused as children become abusers as adults is personally one of my pet peeves it is something that will light a fire underneath my feet quicker than anything because it is the most heinous myth and I can't tell you how many times as both a mom myself and as a survivor who works with other survivors, I've seen that myth come out and it be used against us. Um, and it is, 
is horrific because to the best of my knowledge, there are no hard and cold facts. Uh, there is there is not a body of research out there that I'm aware of that says blank percentage of people who are abused as children grow up to perpetrate abuse against victims of any age. There's it's not out there. It doesn't exist. Or if it exists, it's not well. Um, it doesn't it doesn't stand up against tests of time and good research. So. Mm, that one bugs me. And I think it, it is used against men more than women, but I see it used against both genders. And if someone says that to you, you feel free right there to stand there and say, could you please give me the research that backs that up? Because I don't think you're right. Um, especially now when, although I know many of us um, know that there are not a lot of resources out there for survivors and we need a whole lot more. There are more than what were available generations ago. So every time a survivor gets help as a child, immediately after their abuse, they are more likely to heal well as a child and not need intervention as an adult. Who got better? you know, who could have had counseling and therapy when we were a child and then never body. have had to. What? Oh, we lost you for a minute. The whole thing went blank. I'm here. Did, did you lose my sound too? We lost your sound and then there was like a little black circle. Like it was a, like a thing. Like it wasn't, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's you're, okay. You're beautiful and I want you to stay here. I don't know. That was what was happening before we went live, you guys. So this yeah. happens sometimes on YouTube and it happened when we used to be on Google as well. So we <laughs> apologize for the tech difficulties. The um, tech gremlins cut me off there. It's like that big, you know, when someone's performing on a vaudeville stage and they take that big hook out there and yank you back. Exactly. Right. <laughs> That's it. You've had enough time. Or, right. or, you know, we just watch the Emmys, right? And they start playing the piano when the person is giving too many thank yous up on the stage and that gets louder and louder and louder <laughs> until they drown them out. So I guess I was drowned out. Um, oh, but what you were <laughs> saying was very important and we were following along with all of it. And then I was all of a sudden like, Oh, we lost her, you guys. So anyway, um, yeah. So if any of you guys want to let us know, um, if anybody wants to tweet us, if people are over on YouTube on that little chat thing that they have going on now, which we are not moderating because we're here, but um, just send us a tweet um, like you did last week and the week before. You guys were so great about sending um, us tweets, letting us know if people had questions over on YouTube because we don't have a YouTube moderator yet. We're going to have to like get super fancy and do that at some point. But <laughs> um, but Bobby, I just wanted to um, really quick, just, I know that you and I are so on the same page when it comes to this, but I want to let anyone here watching know that many survivors that are in our community, especially like over in our safe groups, uh, which our safe groups are free from minimization, free from marginalization, um, free from blame or judgment or like walking on eggshells or sort of like free from political slants and all kinds of weird, like it's just a safe, it's what it is. It's a safe group. It's a safe place to come and to heal in safety from other survivor, from safety from other predators in the company of other survivors who have lived, sort of lived what you've been through or similar and so they get you like they get you and they speak your language and I really want to um, I really want to share with anyone that is watching right now how common it is for survivors to come into our safe groups in their 30s 40s 50s 60s even 70s and say I never knew anything like this was even possible. I've never even spoken of my abuse. I've never uttered the words. I've never, like we receive emails all the time. I've never even spoken the words out loud that I was sexually abused. 
So how could I even come and be in one of your groups if I'm not even able to admit that I was sexually abused? I can't even speak about it. And if that's you, I just want to encourage you. There is never any pressure to share in our groups. You don't have to show up and become a chatterbox and start sharing your whole life story and airing all your laundry from your family. But simply just being in the presence of others in the same group who just silently get you. There's something miraculous about that. The chains of shame and silence begin to fall off slowly. And when you start to use your voice and even dare to make that first post, which is private and secret and no one, but no one ever sees it or knows about it unless they're already vetted and they're in that group with us, something really miraculous happens. And I know that the stigma attached to mental illness or sexual abuse or anything along the lines of the things that we're discussing is terrifying and so thick and so debilitating. I just want to encourage you that if you never thought that you would ever have the ability to be surrounded by other people who just get you and who will never tell you that you should have been over that by now, that happened 30 years ago, what's your deal? I mean, aren't you supposed to forgive? forgive and forget and blood is thicker than water and you know what's wrong with you you're making it all up I don't believe you if it really happened why didn't you say something 25 years ago I mean what you know and then they begin to blame you I, I really want to make it very clear especially in this video to the men out there there is no need to be macho there is no need to show up and have it all figured out there is no need to show up and share and like we're not going to be doing any virtual uh, trust falls where you fall off the stage into the arms of everybody else to stand. There's none of that going on. There's none of that. There's just a group filled with compassionate individuals that deeply care about the well-being of other humans. That's it. That's my hard sell. If that's you and you've been suffering in silence and you want to join a group of other humans that are compassionate and care about other humans, then please go to the about section of this channel, go down underneath this video, reach out to us in any which way or form that you possibly can and just let us know that you would like to heal and save community because you don't have to suffer alone. A man that is 70, not if you are a guy who's 19 and just trying to figure out what the heck is going on and, and, and like, are these memories real? I just want you to know no matter who you are, no matter how old you are, you are welcome. And it's a safe place and there's no judgment and there's no minimization and there's no mask that you need to wear. You're just welcome to come. So, um... Bobby, how's everybody doing on the Twitter feed? I haven't been paying attention. I've been busy no, like, okay. on my soapbox. <laughs> um, people are still talking about the, um, you know, the myth that if you were abused as a child, that you're going to grow up and abuse children. Um, and I can I can talk about the fact that there there can be a cycle of intergenerational trauma, and that's not specific to childhood sexual abuse, but there, there is a lot of research out there that shows that trauma can actually affect your DNA and it can change your DNA, which can then have an impact on your survivors. Um, so sometimes, yeah, there's, there's intergenerational trauma. It's, it's hard for one generation to pick up um, some dysfunctional coping skills and ways of communicating and ways of operating as a family and rules and um, structure that aren't healthy, it's really hard not to have an impact on the children that come from those families. And so they learn some things that aren't healthy, you know, and they may go out and they may learn some things that are healthy, but maybe they still have a few things that aren't healthy and they have children and there come a few more things. Okay. That's called an intergenerational cycle of trauma. That does not mean, does not mean that, you know, this father and this, this family sexually abused his children. So they sexually abused and they're sexually, it's not the same thing. 
okay? There is a lot of information about there about intergenerational trauma. There is research that supports the fact that intergenerational trauma is not a myth. Um, it is a reality. And yes, you will hear Athena and I and other survivors talk about breaking that cycle because we have worked very hard in our own recovery in order to raise a generation of children who were not impacted by the trauma in the generations before us. But that's not the same thing as saying, you know, abuse, sexual abuse, sexual abuse, sexual abuse, sexual abuse, sexual abuse. Um, so don't let anybody trip you up on that one. They're not the same things. Um, and then again, you know, lots of stuff on the, on the Twitter timeline about how, um, you know, we understand that men may have some different needs and we want to meet them, um, even if we don't completely understand them. You know, as a woman, I don't completely understand all the unique needs um, of the men in our community, but I want to help. Um, so we're really thankful for the men who are speaking up tonight and who spoke up previously so that we could put together the information that we did for tonight's broadcast. So, um, and then Matt and Jack are over moderating on the YouTube page, people who are making comments. Um, so we're very thankful for that. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much to, um, thanks so much to you, Jack, for always doing the Storify every single week for two years, pretty much. Or I know that Bobby did it for a little bit and then you took it over. So for as long as you've been doing it, thank you. And uh, Matt, thank you. Um, and, you know, we have some amazing women in this community who are fierce advocates for our male survivors. I'm thinking of Kalisha. I'm thinking of Dominique. Um, I'm thinking of um, Christy. I'm thinking of just so many of our community members that have been around for so long. Simi. Um, you all, many of you have been here with us for years and here you are, you show up every single week, every single week, ready to just support one another and hold one another up. And um, it's really powerful. So we're going to go into a time of education and sharing right now. And what we're going to do, um, what we do every single week, if you're new to this broadcast, I'm assuming that a lot of you that are going to be watching this replay are going to be new because we've never done anything that's been male specific before. So if this is you, welcome. We are honored that you are here and that you trust us with your time. Your time is the most valuable thing you have in the world. We have a comprehensive one page downloadable resource that we are going to do sort of a webinar with right now for the next several minutes and we're going to go down line by line and we're going to share that with you sort of a teaching portion of our weekly broadcast when we are doing we're normally here doing live q a and then every week we do a screen share as well if you would like complimentary access to tonight's downloadable one page resource again it's free there's no there's no Tupperware, there's no pyramid, multi-level weirdness, like just take it. It's yours. It's free. We just want to add value to your life and your recovery journey. Go over to one of our websites, nomoreshameproject.com or traumarecoveryuniversity.com. Find a tab that says downloadables. You'll figure it out from there. And we appreciate you. We value you. And so we're going to shift over and Bobby's going to share our one page. And we can't wait to just share these resources with you. Oh, Bobby, I forgot to tell you. After you share the one page, uh -huh. I, I forgot to add one book on there. I forgot to add one last resource that I'm currently using with a uh, male client. Okay. And it's actually, actually I'm using this particular book with a male client one-on-one -on -one, and I'm working with he and his wife as a couple. So but I forgot to add it to the list. And so I really want to share it, but I'll share it at the very end if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Okay. Let's do this one pagey thing. Um, present to everyone. Okay. As Athena said, um, a one page is just a summary of information that we put together 
every week um, for each topic that we present on. And um, it's available as a PDF on the website. And you can go over, click on it, download it. Um, we have more than 100 right now, probably close to about maybe about 110, 120. A whole variety of topics. And so please don't hesitate to pop over there, um, download as many as you want, keep them around, um, you know, wallpaper a wall, whatever is most helpful to you. Okay, so tonight's topic is about male survivors. Most of our international cultures do not like to acknowledge or discuss childhood abuse, especially childhood sexual abuse. When the topic is brought up, the focus is generally on female victims and male perpetrators. However, boys are sexually assaulted at a much greater rate than many cultures admit. In the US, statistics indicate that between one in four and one in six boys is sexually assaulted before their 18th birthday. Male survivors of childhood sexual abuse face an uphill battle of receiving support and help because of the large numbers of false myths about boys and men and sexual abuse. Such as, boys always welcome any kind of sexual attention, right? I mean, how many times have we heard the stories in the press about a female teacher sexually assaulting an underage male student and people going, well, what's the problem with that? I mean, that boy was probably just thrilled to have the sexual attention of an adult female. Oh my goodness, you know, people are probably slapping him on the back and saying, way to go, guy. And he's probably like, wow, cool. Yeah, no, people. No, boys who experience sexual arousal during abuse must have wanted the attention and the experience. Okay, and that's a big fat no too. Um, you know, and we talk about this one about men, but people rarely talk about the fact that often the female body responds with biological arousal too, to abuse. But that is just it. It is a biological response. It is not something that we have any control over. And it is certainly not an indication of consent. Okay? Your body's response to sexual assault is not an indication of consent. Boys who are sexually abused grow up to become men who sexually abuse others. Okay, we've, we've talked about this one already, but wow, yeah, no. Um, and I wish I could give you some numbers, I really do, but there aren't any. And I've looked multiple times because people have brought up this issue multiple times with me that they believe this is true. Um, there are, there's nothing that indicates this is true. There's just not. Um, for neither girls or boys. Real men aren't upset by having been sexually abused. They easily brush it off, right? You know, here's that, um, the macho, the machismo uh, male culture here, uh, biting us in the hiney, unfortunately, because again, it expects that men um, not only welcome, any kind of sexual attention, but if they receive sexual attention that they didn't want, um, then they just, you know, hey, no big deal, and just brush it off and off they walk. And by the way, I don't mean sexual attention, I mean sexual assault. Boys are rarely abused by men or adult female relatives. Most of the time, it's an older female and everyone knows all boys enjoy any sexual attention they get. Okay, so there's the myth that boys are not abused by men 
or that boys are not abused by people like their mothers or their grandmothers or their oldest sibling or an aunt. You know, most of the time, the myth is, you know, that it's the teacher, the coach, um, you know, the friend's older sister who's an adult um, who is several or who is several years older than the boys. And that's that's a myth. Most boys are sexually assaulted by someone that they know and just as just as likely to be abused by a man as they are a woman. These horrible myths combine to make reporting and getting support for sexual abuse very challenging, if not impossible, for male survivors. The truth is, boys are just as likely to be abused by someone they know as girls and are no more likely to enjoy being abused as girls are. And there is no evidence to support the myth that males abused as children become perpetrators when adults at a higher rate than women do. Finally, having been abused as a child does not make a male any less of a man. Sadly, profound misunderstanding or worse denial of the needs and challenges faced by male survivors is all too common. Many cultures around the world still openly endorse or unquestioningly reinforce toxic masculine stereotypes that highlight invulnerability and denial of pain as the essential qualities of manliness. Across the globe, men simply are not allowed to admit they have been sexually exploited and abused. And if they do, they are often disregarded, disbelieved, or treated as though they themselves are now more likely to harm others. All of those responses are toxic and misinformed. You know, and I look through that and I read that, I think, oh my gosh, what a blow that must be. Not that, you know, I have not dealt with some treatment lies that have been a blow to me, but the fact that a man could stand up and say, I was sexually abused. And one of the first responses back to be back to him is going to be, well, you know, we need to be careful of you because you're going to turn around and abuse our children then. I mean, can you imagine how horrific that would be to finally get the courage to stand up about being a victim? And one of the first responses is that you must be a perpetrator because you had been a victim. That's horrific. And um, I'm hoping that by some of this, sharing some of this information, we can reduce that happening for some of the male survivors out there. And then the page has some excellent resources for male survivors. Um, it is a PDF that you're gonna download from the website and all the links are clickable. Um, so the first one is mensmovement.com. And this is a website where men come together and share, blog, inspire, encourage, and help one another in aspects of life. The Good Men Project, um, this is a, a kind of a, a magazine or an online magazine. Um, and it's all about um, men and women sharing about what is meant, what it means to be a good man in the 21st century. So it's not specific to abuse. It's not specific to um, trauma. It's about all aspects of men's lives. And it's written by men and women, but it has some really good information that challenges the societal stereotypes about men and you know how men have to be A, B, C, or D. And they really encourage every man to embrace whoever he is and it doesn't have to fit into A, B, C, or D. There is malesurvivor.org. <clears throat> this has resources, conferences, retreats, and a wealth of information for male survivors of abuse. Oneinsix.org has high quality resources and community interaction for male survivors. And then our very own Matt has his website, survivingmypast.net, 
which is a blog written from a male perspective about dissociation, anxiety, and PTSD. We want to encourage all men and women to develop a safe support system where you can receive the validation you deserve as well as practice new and healthy relational skills. Cultivating healthy relationships with other survivors is extremely healing regardless of gender. Ask us today about getting plugged into a free online safe support group for male and female survivors alike. And again, all the links are clickable. And so if you want to um, do this, you just need to click on the, click here. There we go. Hey, um, hey, Bobby. Uh huh. So, um, Christy says getting aroused has so much to do with the shame and disgust you feel. How do you how do you deal with that? And I, I want I wanted to, I wanted to briefly mention this topic, but I also, since this topic has been mentioned and brought up over a dozen times I thought that it would be great maybe in a couple weeks for us to cover the topic of arousal during abuse on a separate like on an hour-long video which we can dedicate the time that it deserves and to answer everyone's questions because that is a question that comes up 90% of my clients have asked me about that and we receive messages regarding that a lot like the biological response yeah that that we incur during abuse and it is just that it's biological so right. um so how would you feel about doing that in a couple weeks i know next sure. week we're doing it we're covering the important topic of enmeshment next week enmeshment. but yes perhaps in two weeks we could do um arousal during abuse and how to deal with the shame of that and the aftermath of that and just biological response during right that. and just understanding it um, and when you understand it, I think that in itself takes some of the shame away, but not all of it. Yeah, um, most definitely. Yeah. Uh, everybody on the Twitter stream is, is basically just sharing, um, sharing just how supportive our community has been and that it's a safe place for everybody. A lot of thank yous going out to you, Bobby, regarding talking about the intergenerational abuse that happens within within family units um oh jack yes could you please share and harriet jack and harriet could you both please share jack tweet it out or share it in the comments and then harriet put the thumbnails for breaking the cycle of child abuse in your family and intergenerational family dysfunction both that yeah. would be amazing because <clears throat> both of those guys those are big 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 ones Big yeah, one. Jack got up the one about intergenerational family dysfunction. Oh, so he's got that oh, up I'm, there. I'm like, I'm like six minutes behind. I have a lag. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Disregard. <laughs> um, you guys, are, okay. you guys are all so amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh, um, Dawn <laughs> says this lie. The lies about about us being abused and becoming abusers is also perpetuated by the crime shows as well. Oh no, the lie right. about ma males, right. um, males becoming um, right. sexual, sexual predators because they were sexually abused as children. Um, yes. The crime shows the male sociopath usually has a history of sexual abuse. It's talked about all the time. Right. So um, that's a great point, Dawn. Thank you for bringing that up. And again, this is society spinning and sort of, I know that it is, it is more commonly discussed and talked about, but that doesn't mean anything. Let's, let's unpack that statement for just a moment. It's more commonly talked about. Like, right. that go, doesn't make it more true. true. No, just like me going and deciding to a few times a week or, or even five days a week, like how episodes are played on television or binge watch over on Netflix. If I decided to go down and stand in my garage every day for an hour, the length of an episode, it doesn't make me a car. Cause, cause I'm not, I'm a human. Like just because they talk about men being perpetrators every 
day, five days a week on hour long episodes doesn't make it any more true. It just means that that's what gets the ratings. That's what people want to see. That's what, that was their most watched episode. So they decided to, to blueprint that one episode and then make an entire season about that topic. I mean, that's how it goes, guys. And we want to be a voice of truth here for you. That's what this web show is about. We want to be a safe space for you to come. Just a safe space right here is a safe space for you to just come and be. <sighs> Mask off. You don't have to pretend that you're strong and you got it all figured out. You don't have to pretend that everything's great because sometimes it's not. And we want to be a voice of truth. We want to be a source of truth to you guys. And the truth is that just because you were sexually abused doesn't mean that you're going to become an abuser. And just because you are a man doesn't mean you have to pretend that you have it all together. And again, I know we already went through the one page, but I want to encourage you, if you have not gone and downloaded that free downloadable for whatever reason, maybe you're driving, but if you haven't downloaded it yet, please just go get it for free. Go and look at those resources. The links are clickable. We want you to feel supported. We want you to have the, the resources you need. And in this amazing age of internet marketing and all that, I want to say something very clear right now to people who are very internet savvy and that understand internet marketing. Those links that are on our one page downloadable resource, those are not affiliate links. We didn't put those links in our one page because we get commission every time you click on them. That's not what that is. That is just you, that is for you. We wanted to add value to you. We want you to have the resources you need. We don't get paid if you go and you click on things, on, the, on those links that we gave you. That's not what this is about. This is a sales-free environment here. So we just want you to get the support you need. We have safe groups for you. We have resources for you. Oh, Bobby, hmm. um, I, how's everybody doing? Do we have any <laughs> questions? No, no, people are talking about um, the different videos. Jack is sharing the different videos. We're talking some more about the biological response. Um, oh, good. And how um, society and social media, you know, perpetuate some of the myths. Mm. Um, and we'll talk about that. Well, I think that dedicating an entire hour to that topic is like a super good idea. So don't you? Yes. Yes. Um, is it okay if I share the book and the workbook yes. that yes, I yes. am going, that I'm using with my male clients? Okay. You awesome. bet. Um, okay. So guys, guys, well guys, guys and gals, this is for everybody. Okay. Um, for, first, first there is, there is this book and it is called Healing the Wounded Heart. It is by Dr. Dan Allender who is the founder of the Allender Center for Trauma, and he lives in the Pacific Northwest. Bobby? Yes, he does. Place. Your favorite place in the whole world. I believe he's in Seattle, if I'm not mistaken. He is yes. somewhere right between Seattle and Portland. Like he's like, he's always right around in that area. So this, just so you guys know who Dr. Allender is, I kind of fangirl out about him a bit. He has been working with childhood sexual abuse survivors for 25 years, 25 years. He wrote his first book, Wounded Heart, 25 years ago. And his daughter was just a little girl. And then now she's a full blown adult. And he just released this a couple months ago, Healing the Wounded Heart. And this is an excellent book. There is freedom in this book. There is freedom in this book. Now, I want to issue a trigger warning for anyone. We have some people that are here tonight that are on our Twitter stream tonight who have endured some religious abuse was part of their child abuse. This is written from a faith-based perspective. If you have endured religious abuse, Please tread lightly and please read the back cover and go to Amazon and read through first before you purchase it because 
It is written from a faith-based perspective, just as every book I've ever written is written from a faith-based perspective. But this is like, like, like the books I've written that you guys know about, but it's like even more. Like it's, it goes way more in depth, way more in depth, because this man has been doing this for 25 years, full time. And then with this book is this awesome workbook that goes along with it. Oh, I just lost my page. There we go. Um, this workbook goes along with it, and it is awesome. They don't come together as a bundle that I know of, but I got them both on Amazon, and they were not extremely expensive. But you guys, there is hope. There is hope and healing and freedom in this book. And the clients I am working with that are going through this book are experiencing more freedom and more hope than I've ever, I would, I would, I would actually go out on a limb and say that it's probably the most successful client experience I've ever had. And I'm not saying it's all because of this book, like I'm not like toting it, it's like the end all be all of the whole wide world, but I'm telling you, this man knows what he's talking about. He's been doing this full time for 25 years and he's a survivor of incest himself. Mother, son, incest. And he's built his entire life and his career around childhood sexual abuse survivors. So um, I hold his work in high regard and I've learned a lot from this man. Just books, just his perspective, and the way that he is so passionate about doing whatever he possibly can for adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse to experience freedom and not live in shame and want to die. And, there, and, and he is very, very, very clear in his books about people that go around, you guys think I get on my soapbox about the church? minimizing abuse and saying that people that have mental illness just need to be healed and delivered and he ha I mean you think I get on my soapbox this dude puts me to shame I'm like this little ch quiet church mouse compared to this dude I mean he gets up there and he just brings it like you guys are all doing everyone a disservice by acting this way so I will stop because I get pretty fired up and Bobby I love you and I'll hand this over to you and I'm sorry <laughs> You know, and just to tie on to the back of that, he has several other books that are all excellent. Um, so if you read this book and you like Dan Allender, don't hesitate to pick up his other books um, because they're all spot on um, and they're readable. They're not full of technical jargon. Um, so I like him a bunch. He's right up there with um, Cloud and Townsend in, in yeah. my head with um, books that are um, kind of change making for survivors. So boundaries, safe yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So um, yeah, he's awesome. He's just awesome. I love Dan Allender. Um, I think I saw him speak a couple of times. He's really, he's amazing. So yes, pick by the book. <laughs> See the movie, if only, huh? Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm. I'm like literally 13 minutes behind. I don't. I'm not. An I, if I don't answer all you guys right away, I'll answer you. I have a meeting right after our broadcast, and I will be. Actually, the meeting that I'm having tonight after our broadcast, Bobby, is actually at the beach. So. Ah. Maybe, uh -huh, maybe I will send you guys on Twitter. I'll hashtag. Follow the No More Shame hashtag in the next like hour or two and get some beautiful, uh, if you guys like ocean, like some people don't like the ocean. They're like, that's not relaxing to me. It makes me feel like I'm seasick. Don't, don't make those videos, Athena. So, but if you like the beach and like landscapes with ocean, I'm going to be, I'll be tweeting you guys on the No More Shame hashtag just for you, just for my family. So um, today on September 26th, September 26, 2016, go to the hashtag no more shame and I'll, I'll tweet you guys a whole bunch of pictures and I'll make sure I respond to all your tweets because there are so many. Um, 
But we are going to transition this broadcast right now. We want to thank each and every one of you who show up here every week live. Um, you guys are amazing. Thank you for being here. And for all of you watching the replay, we want to thank you for trusting us with your time. We want to thank you so much for um, making it through all the way to the end of the broadcast. It's been a, it's been a great hour. Um, 60 minutes on the dot. So we're going to transition super quick for any of you who are brand new. We're going to do a couple of screen shares. We're going to let you know how you can get in touch with us, number one, and how you can get plugged into Safe Community, number two, for just the next few minutes. And we're just grateful. We're grateful that you were here. Head on over to nomoreshameproject.com or traumarecoveryuniversity.com. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and we don't really send out a lot of emails or anything we will in the in the coming months but we just we haven't so um we'll, we'll start to try to keep in closer touch with you guys so thank you for being here and um being just the most important part of this community okay let's do the present to everyone and hop back over here okay these are ways to connect with Athena and I in the No More Shame Project Trauma Recovery University. Um, you can email us. Um, I am at bobbylparish at gmail.com. Athena is at Athena Moberg speaking at gmail.com. And then the No More Shame Project, that's our joint email account, is no more shame project at gmail.com. Um, on Twitter, I'm Bobby L. Parish. Athena is Athena Moberg. And Trauma Recovery University is Trauma Recovery you and um, Twitter doesn't care about capitals so don't worry about those with Twitter you can watch all of our videos 24 7 365 on YouTube um, Roku TV or Google Plus just do a search for trauma recovery University and they will pop right up the channel will pop up there if you would like to connect with us on Facebook um, we have five channels for you there to get in touch with. And the first is the Trauma Recovery University page. And the second is um, my professional page, which is Bobby Parrish Coaching and Consulting. There's my personal page, Bobby Parrish. There is Athena's professional page, which is Athena Moberg Speaking. And then her personal page, which is Dawn Athena Moberg. And there's the one last way that you can reach and watch all of our videos, 365, 24 seven. I did that backwards. Um, bit.ly forward slash trauma recovery you. And those capitals matter. Capitals matter with bit.ly, capitals don't matter with Twitter. Okay, so let's look at the last screen share that we have and hang on. I have to make it pop up. Okay, let's see if it works now. There it is. Okay. Share and present to everyone. These are the ways that you can join our um, safe community. All of these are free, always will be, never will be a charge for them. And we welcome you to participate in as many as you'd like or as few as you'd like. Um, as I indicated earlier, we have three Twitter chats, chats <laughs> a week. The first is on Monday and it is at 10 a.m. Pacific or 6 p.m. in the UK. This was started um, about a year and a half ago for our uh, Twitter family in the UK. And the hashtag for that is CSAQT. Um, child sexual abuse question time. Anyone can can join in this chat. Um, it's not just for UK survivors, uh, but the other two Twitter chats we had were incurring like at two o'clock in the morning for the UK. So we have an earlier one in the day for people who are in different time zones. And then the second Twitter chat is this one. If you're with us live right now, you're participating in it. It is a combination video and Twitter chat. The hashtag is no more shame. It's at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern on Monday evenings or 2 o'clock Tuesday morning if you're in the UK. And then Tuesday evening, we have the original sex abuse chat that was started in January 2014 by Rachel Thompson and myself. 
It is at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern, or Wednesday at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, and the lovely Ms. Athena is there with us. So um, she always joins in, most of the time joins in <laughs> on sex abuse chat. So if you like seeing I her try, here, I you'll like to. seeing her there. Yes, I try she to. does. <laughs> she does a good job. She does an awesome job. Um, if you would like to join one of our support groups, uh, you can follow this simple four-step process. It is the easiest way to get in touch with us. Um, please understand that it is just Athena and I twying, twying, I'm Elmer Fudd here, trying to get people in as quickly as we can. So if our response is not immediate, please be patient with us. Um, and we ask that you follow these four steps. The first is to like the Trauma Recovery University Facebook page, to send friend requests to Athena and I on our personal accounts. And once um, we have, one of us has accepted your friend request, send us a message saying, I'd like to heal and save community, or I'd like to join one of your support groups, something along those lines. And then if we don't already know you from Twitter or Facebook or in other interactions, we will take a few moments to ask you some questions to ascertain that you're safe because we don't want to allow any predators into our support groups. And once we have done that, and we will welcome you into one of our support groups and post an introduction of you in there so people will know that you have arrived. And that is all she wrote. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> um, like Athena said, next week we're talking about enmeshment. Enmeshment is a term used to describe um, relationships, which are... Um, they're not healthy relationships, but it's different from codependency. It's um, a relationship where both people are completely um, intertwined of one another and pretty much not operating independently anymore. Um, enmeshment is bi-directional. Codependency can be, be unidirectional, so it can be one person codependent on another. Uh, but in enmeshment, you see both partners um, it happens often um, in abuse abuser interactions and survivors can also become involved in enmeshed relationships um, if they haven't learned healthy relationship skills, good communication skills, um, and other ways of operating in healthy relationships because their childhood was filled with the need to just survive and we didn't get to learn how to have healthy relationships. So we're going to talk about that, unpack that one next week. Um, what else, Ms. Athena? I think that's about it. Um, I'm just really grateful that everybody got an opportunity to um, be here tonight. And please share this video with any man or even on, if you would be so bold as to share this video on your Facebook page or with a community filled with men that you know of. If you are a member of a Facebook group that is mostly men, then one out of every six of them, statistically, may have likely been sexually abused prior to their 18th birthday. And the misnomer and the myth is that if you share resources about this, that it will make things worse and cause problems. But the reality is, so many of the men you know just wish that they had a place where they could go and just be themselves. Be unconditionally accepted, unconditionally loved, not judged, and just supported and not minimized. So if you would be so bold as to share this video in communities filled with men or on your Facebook page, if you're a man in support of other men who may have been sexually abused, um, the men in this community have endured a lot of, as we all have, um, marginalization and minimization. And we would just, we would love to reduce the stigma of sexual abuse. Aloha, everyone, and thank you Whoa. so much uh -oh. for tuning in. I made you talk. Oh. <laughs> you did. You made me talk. Oh, my goodness. 
<laughs> I don't like my voice. Is that what my voice really sounds like? Your voice oh. is lovely. I was pulling up yeah. one of our videos to um, get a link. You know how when you hear your own voice, though? You know how when you hear your own voice? Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, please, if you could be so bold as to share this with any men that you know or on your page for any men that you know or in communities filled with men. And again, please um, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you liked hanging out here with us. Join one of our safe group communities and make friends with other survivors. You can do so anonymously. I've walked people through this process on making up an email address and then making yourself a Facebook profile and then getting plugged into safe community anonymously away from all your other Facebook friends. So if that's something that you're interested in, it's super duper easy. It takes five minutes and um, we would love to welcome you in. And we're grateful that you chose to spend this hour of your time with us. We value you and thank you for letting us know that you're receiving our resources and that they are helpful. Thank you so much. Um, Bobby, would you like to say anything to everybody before we, before we say goodbye? Yeah, I'm just, I'm very grateful that you give us a chance to share in your recovery journey information with you that might be helpful. Um, I know that Athena and I had a, a long, hard go of it. And what we're trying to do is provide to everyone what we wish we had had ourselves. So um, it's wonderful that other people actually like it and enjoy us enjoy it um, and receive it so we're, we're grateful thank you yeah thanks everybody we'll see you next week on the topic of enmeshment and in two weeks on the topic of biological response during sexual abuse or um, also referred to as um, being aroused during abuse so therefore you must have liked it and wanted it so um, delicate topics, practice excellent self-care. This can be triggering for hours afterwards. So please take care of yourself. And we are so grateful. I'm Athena Moberg, and this is Bobby Parrish, and we love bringing you everything you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery. Bye, everybody.